Hey guys and gals, Chartreuse here, Brace for Minecraft Redstone today. Today we are in the snapshot 14W04A, and we are taking a look at my combination lock. Now, this one was inspired by the one generic B did. In fact, it operates the exact same way. But my challenge from Ray was to make this much smaller. Uh, Jennings was quite a large design, and you can see how small I've made it. Um, it's too long for each uh, digit, and you can chain this on as long as you want. It is five wide, thanks to TT Lemon, who told me to shrink, how to shrink this thing over here in a way I didn't see, which is uh, how to get in here with a bit of clever trickery of moving my torch up. And yeah, it's five wide, five tall, including the block it stands on. So you got, you know, those of you who don't like including the ground, it's four high to you, but to everyone else, it's five high. And it's quite simple to set. You set your combination using the amount of items in the hopper. Uh, this one is set currently to top right corner. That's the top right corner, which is... We're using a... It's a signal strength of one in the top right corner, so we need to output a signal strength of two here. So, before I get into that, let's show you how it works. We're going to enter the correct combo, and we'll open the door here, so it's top right corner. Bottom right corner. Now, I can do this faster, I just have a wooden button, because I like wooden buttons. And it'd probably help if you stretch this out longer, the delay. But, as you see, the door is now open. We have an output signal here holding it open until we enter uh, a digit that will make the combination not right. So if your combination is 1111 and you enter a number, another 1, it's still 1111. So here I'm going to enter another top left corner, which throws off the combination, and the door is now shut. So how does this work, and how do I build it? Well, building is quite simple. You're just going to follow this video. But, you get your item frame and your button right below it. From the back of the item frame, you take it out with the comparator. And we just chain the signal here with multiple comparators, because we want all these points here, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, to have the same signal strength as is outputted by this item frame. Now, these two are strict, this middle one's strictly not necessary, but it just helps from the chainability of the design, just make it look aesthetically ple pleasing at the, when you have a bunch of them. So now these comparators over here, instead of subtract mode, and in the ho hopper or furnace or chest or whatever you want to use, you just need to figure out your own values. You s set the value based off of signal strength. Now for this design there, we want to set it one stronger, we want a one stronger signal than what we expect out of the frame. So the frame is a one block, si the frame outputs a one strong signal here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight strong and back to one. So for setting a what, if you want a one and a lock, we set it with a two strong, which in this case is 32, 64 stackable items in a hopper. Now these items are, the, these not, counts here I have put are not the minimums. They are just ones that are conveniently roundable, easy to count out, that work the same. And you see up here we have a nine strong signal for detecting the top center position in that design. So, my combination we have set in here was the top right corner, bottom right corner, bottom left, and top left. So now let's happen if we enter an invalid combination. So at any point we're going to enter, we're going to go one, two, three, and then somewhere else. Or bottom, this one, this one. Oops, did I break it there by turning it? Nope, it's still in there because I didn't do it right. Uh, bottom right corner. Now instead of so the correct answer is the top left corner. But what if we pick top center? Well, if we pick that, you see this line is all reset because the values are stored in the locking repeaters and our signal is reset. Now, there's another way so you might think of, what if we have the same number twice in a row? So 32, 32. So if I make this one 32, so now it's top right, top right, bottom left, top le left. So now we're going to enter top right. Works just fine. Top right. Now, something different you might notice is both of these are on in this case because there's nothing really to stop that. Now, there's no downside to that because if you enter 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, say, if that was your password somehow, I know I'm using numbers and they're not numbers, but bear with me. Then you get, it doesn't matter if you enter 1, 1, 1, 2, 3 because that's still, you entered 1, 1, 2, 3, and that's how most combination locks work. So, that's just fine having two blocks there. So now we're going to enter next digit of the password, bottom left, 
you see it's advanced by one. It's no longer in this pair. It's now just in this last one. That's the feature of this that stops it from breaking itself. And finally, four. Solving the combination. So the tricks this uses is a few nifty tricks that you might be able to use any elsewhere in your builds. The way it's detecting these signals is it's using the one stronger signal here and subtracting from it the source. So from this comparator, when we have the right number, which I'll enter here, I'll enter this one's right number, we expect a one strong signal here, as you can see. If this signal over here is stronger than this, as now, you see this torch comes on, which means it has a zero signal here, and this torch powers this block here, which is holding it off. Whenever that block down there is powered, that means it is not right. So if we put it back to the top, we have the one there, it doesn't go down. Now, uh, it's really hard, it's hard to do this, so I'm just going to break it to do it. To get a, if we have a stronger signal, then the weak signal comes down here. If it's stronger than one, it'll go down here, power the block, which is exactly what we want. So this will only work on the number we've specified. Now, since this only has eight values, this works perfectly. But if you were trying to detect all 16 values, you'd have to use something different for the uh, max value on this case of uh, 15, because you can't have a 16 value. So, yeah, that this design works for great for smaller things. So that's a great innovation. That's, that's one of the innovations. The other one is this mechanism here. It may look odd, but what it's doing is we have comparators in subtract mode. So when the number is right, the signal is allowed to pass through this comparator and into the locking repeater where it gets latched. When the, cause the locking repeater won't, like when this, when the value's in there, that comes on, it stays in that locking repeater. And it prevents it from going too far by the monostable. So even if we have two digits in the same row, it won't count as a double press. And when you get a number wrong, the signal, you'll have a pulse here for the signal, but this number's wrong and you try to enter it. So when this thing will be pulling that signal down. So when you let it out of this latch and try to lock it into this one, this thing stops it from going through because you have a repeater powering inside of an inverting comparator that subtracts everything. It'll pull it down to zero. And that was TT uh, T. Lemon who helped me shrink this over to this right side here. I had originally had it over here and same mechanism, just a bit slightly bigger, too, too wider. This is much better. Because I didn't think have the sense of pulling this torch up here. So that's the combination lock. That's how it works. Uh, all these values, I'll just do a quick flyby over these values again. This is just for values in a hopper of a 64 stackable item to give each signal strength. Just uh, all the numbers I came up with, they're just roundable numbers. So like that's a stack and a half. Uh, that w that's, no, that's, no, that's three stacks. That's two and a half stacks. Yeah, I think that's 2 and 16, I think. But that corresponds to all these values going around there. Now, what it originally came up with is very similar, but it works in reverse. This one, you have selectable... You select which uh, hopper to use and have a single output where it detects the strength. Now, this works in the other way, where this signal is one stronger than what's in here, so the top right corner, where it would be a signal 1, you have uh, nothing in the hopper. I don't think I have any of those left here. Oh, there's one. So you would subtract nothing and they would just leave a one signal going through to the end. Then this one would do the same thing with the comparator locks, except it would have these torches in here to pick which one it's using. Not too useful, but maybe you'll get some design ideas out of that one. This one's also tileable, but it's a bit more work. This one is pretty tiny, 5x5 five by, five by... it's way too dark in here. 5x5, uh, five five, and then it's two for each input you want in your combination lock along and then one at the, plus one at the start for this block where they sit on. I guess you can count one more for the item frame of the button, but hey, this is pretty tiny. Anyways, it's been Chartreuse. Have a nice day.